the best ship dynamic is when they go from you fool derogatory to you fool desperate. Character and ship dynamics from Tumblr. We have black cat boyfriend and golden retriever boyfriend dynamic, but I just saw there's also protective Doberman girlfriend and chaotic orange cat girlfriend. Um, hello? TV shows. Here is a person who is a leader. Me. What if they fell in love with their second in command? The group of co-workers who have developed an entire system to make sure they always have each other's backs. They may or may not have also made a pact to one day murder their boss. If one gets fired, they all walk out. Then later murder the boss. The writing trope where two characters are from extremely different cultures, maybe being different species entirely, and character A shows some small sign of affection, like giving a gift or something, but in character B's culture, the small sign of affection means a lot more. Example, in character B's culture, a ring is a sign of marriage. In A's culture, a ring is a small gift between friends or partners. Here B, I got you a gift. Uh, uh, uh huh? I didn't know you felt this way. Huh? Bonus if they're rivals, and in A's culture, the gift is a sign of hate, and in B's, the gift is a sign of love. The best friendships are the ones where A says, B, fully understanding. Yeah, same. The I don't like you, but I don't want you to be in love with someone who isn't me trope. Or the, we don't like each other, but we're always acting lovey-dovey towards each other trope. If we're both single by a certain age, we will marry each other is always a fun story concept, but it could be even better if the pact is made between rivals as a drunken dare, and they go on to sabotage each other's relationships because they've been secretly in love all along. Enemies to lovers, we've seen this a few times now. Know what we ain't seen? Enemies to friends to lovers to enemies to lovers to friends to in-laws. It's got depth and you get to watch the characters cringe as they try to explain their relationship to people. So first they were trying to kill me, but after some time they learned what their boss was actually doing and switched sides. We got along well and then we got closer. Then there was this whole thing where the group had an ideological divide. The whole last civil war, there was a dragon battle in the middle of it. After things cooled down, we picked up where we left off, but then we realized we just weren't really right for each other and became just friends. And then our cousins met and... I freaking hate you, but you're the only person in this entire goddamn town who shares my niche special interests, so we have to hang out, I guess. Is an underrated friendship dynamic both in fiction and real life, to be honest. Absolutely favorite character dynamic is they love each other. This is non-negotiable. Their canon words and actions make it clear they cherish each other so deeply, they love each other so much, you can decide how you see this love, but the love exists and cannot be denied. Like, you can see them as best friends, as seeing each other as family, queer platonic partners, being romantically in love, anything. All of those are equally valid. But the love undeniably exists, and to try to deny it is to deny a core aspect of the characters themselves. It's the thing that brings OTP and BroTP fans together. While the form we see it as may differ, we can both agree the love between the characters exists. Oh. Oh. Moments can be great. Oh sh**, moments are even better. But the long-suffering sigh of acceptance that comes with- Oh. Right. Yeah, of course. Like, come on, what could I have been thinking? There's no other way this could have gone. The character dynamic of, I know you've got my back, but I also don't trust you, is such a winning character dynamic. Perhaps character A is compromising their morals to work with character B. Maybe character B trusts fully and character A doesn't. Perhaps it's an alliance that can only ever be temporary. Regardless, the mix of camaraderie and wariness? To die for. Cinnamon Roll who suffers but retains their saintly inability to feel any negative emotion ever is out. Cinnamon Roll who suffers and comes back to their friends with blood on their teeth and anger dug into the palms of their hands is in. Ship dynamic. Till death do us part. And they are always trying to kill each other. Evil characters whose love for their significant other saves them and changes them to be better. Eh, no. 
evil characters whose love for their significant other turns them into a more horrifying version of themselves. Mmm, yeah? I mean, both are good in the right aspects, but there's just something about the latter that tickles the brain jelly. Literally love toxic couples in fiction. They're not good for each other. I don't give a fig, I'm still sitting here shoving popcorn in my mouth watching them sign their divorce papers. I have exactly one healthy character dynamic for OCs, and it's cheery, happy, oversharing, short, cute man, and also kind, tall woman who would beat up anyone who hurt this little man without a second thought. Do you ever get obsessed with the dynamic between two characters that's so far removed from canon it's on another plane of existence entirely? Not even Fanon views these guys this way. I'm alone in my illness, and there's nothing I can do about it but write. Like, right now it's, I think they beat the out of each other for fun because they know it's real. They've been lied to too many times, but you can't fake pain. You can't fake the way my broken leg throbs or your eye bleeds. I hate you and you hate me, and it's the most real thing we'll ever have. Urgent PSA to all writers. Due to the phenomenal friendship of Wednesday Adams and Edith Sinclair, it is now a compulsory duty to have a gloomy friend and sunshine friend dynamic in any story you write from here on out. Good day. Person A, live, laugh, love. Person B, bite, maim, kill. Come here, baby, look at this thing I made you. The thing, monstrosities beyond your belief. Look, I have a kid now. You made this? Ugh, cringe. Go, go. Can I have my kid back now? No. Parental bestie worsties dynamic that gets me every time. I love codependent relationships in fiction. I love watching two messy people unforgivably in love with each other shatter the world around them. I love seeing interpretations of love as a cosmic, disastrous, redemptive force. I love watching love consume people whole. I love looking at romantic relationships and going, Oh, that is so messed up. Good for them. It's all fun and games, and I love characters that are made to be a pair. Until one of them dies and the other is just left behind. Has this been done yet? I really hope not. Anyways, this dynamic. The word wanted, emotionally desired by someone, and wanted, sought after as a criminal, makes for a good character trope for stuff like, A, a criminal. Can someone please make me feel like I'm wanted? B, uh, you are wanted. In a way, I guess. A. Don't you know that feels even worse? I love characters who just have all the dynamics. Like, they're rivals, they're best friends, they're co-workers, they're arch enemies, they're married, they're divorced, they're going to couples therapy, they're strangers on a train, they're dance partners, detectives in an old black and white murder mystery movie. They have the craziest, healthiest, most toxic relationship anyone's ever seen. I don't know if I've already made a post like this before or not, but I need generally villainous character chooses one generally non-villainous character to bond with, but will probably shank anyone else for one corn chip, to be a much more common trope. I must say, I love this ship dynamic of unhinged x down to earth. It can go so many directions. Maybe unhinged is completely feral. Maybe they're dangerous. Maybe they're a little cracked. Maybe they're always on the verge of doing something totally nuts. Maybe they're a good person who's just always doing something weird and inconvenient, and down to earth is just always there for them being the stable one, and everyone can't figure out how they manage to hold together a relationship, or how down to earth handles the constant chaos, but they just love each other. Listen, nothing beats the prince x the bard. Nothing is better than sword x guitar ships. Just saying. Dynamic prompt. Character A is a math-fixed human. Character B is an arts enjoyer android or robot. I have zero redeeming qualities. I. I will protect you with my life. I love this character storyline dynamic. Character A always gets little bumps and scrapes that B patches up and looks after. Character B is suffering from a serious or fatal injury and A can do nothing but scrabble at medical supplies. Gay, but they're not dating each other, is the funniest relationship two characters can have, honestly. One of my favorite dynamics, character A. Ah, oh, sh**, I messed up again. I really do suck. 
Character B. Shut the f up, you trick ass bitch. You better stop beating yourself up or else I'm gonna beat you up myself. Square up, you beautiful ass. Character B. Angrily reaffirming character A's worth. A highly specific but nonetheless favorite trope of mine. Character has fire powers. And they also get fire hair. Whether they have fire hair all the time or only during certain moments doesn't matter. The fire hair flares up whenever they have high emotions, like they get angry for example. It's my favorite thing in the world when said character gets flustered and they just go thwomp. Bonus points for when the character is usually very aloof. I love it when characters adopt the gestures and habits of their loved ones. Let's say character A loves to dance while mopping and B finds it quite stupid at first. Then, little by little, B starts to do it while cleaning with A, and things go by until A and B start to leave the cleaning to dance in the middle of the hallway, singing and twirling, living their best life. A. Looks like my annoying stupid dancing got you too. B. Well, let's just say it's contagious and my immune system isn't the best. Two characters who are so astronomically different in every aspect, but love each other so tenderly, going out of their way to understand and respect the other. No, you don't get it. The only thing they share is their love for one another. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed any of these posts, I do ask that you check out the original blogs that posted these so you can see more of their content and support them because obviously it's thanks to them that I was able to make this video. So don't just support me, but support them too. I would really appreciate that. Thanks for being here and I will see you some other time.